QuickBooks Online 2022 Bank reconciliation after having entered data using bank feeds after the first or initial month of bank reconciliation. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our bank feed practice file. We set up with a 30 day free trial, holding down control, scrolling up a bit to get to the one, two, five percent currently in the home page, otherwise known as the get things done page in the business view as compared to the accountant view. You can change to the accountant view by going to the cog up top, switch to the accountant view down below. We will be toggling back and forth between the two views, either here or by jumping to the sample company file currently in the accounting view. Back to the bank feed practice file. We're going to open a few tabs to put reports in by going to the tab up top, right clicking on it and duplicating it. Back to the tab to the left, right clicking again and duplicating again. As those are thinking, we're going to go on down to the sample company just to locate where the reports are located, which is on the left hand side under the reports in the accountant view. If we go back on over to the business view, it's still thinking, but that's okay. It's going to find the reports here in the business view, which is under the business overview on the left hand side. Then in the reports, closing up the hamburger, open up the major financial statements reports, including the balance sheet here, the big balance sheet. And we'll do that three months this time. Let's do the three months on the ranging of the changing from 09, 01, 21 to 1130 to 1. And then we're going to change this from total only to months. We don't just want the total only. We want the months run it and so there we have it step october and november we're working on october now in the reconciliation go into the tab to the right we're going to go into the business overview this time opening up the reports again closing the hamburger again but the new thing profit and loss report this time the p l otherwise known as the income statement range change again let's do that three month time frame with the side by side mo 90121 to 11321 and then take this on down to the months months and then that's good let's run it running it so this is our activity and so now we're going to go back to the second tab we're focused here on the second month of bank rec. so the first month we saw that we have that like initial balance problem that we have to put in place oftentimes when you do the first month of bank reconciliation because as you pull the data into the system using the bank feeds you're going to be pulling in the activity to get to the ending balance so you have what has happened during the period but you often have to add that beginning balance if you're not starting at zero when you start entering the bank feeds into the system once you have done the initial bank reconciliation the following bank reconciliations should be an easier thing to do so if i go to the first tab then we can say okay we've been entering the data just a quick recap here recap We've been entering the data in the bookkeeping area and the in the uh, transactions up top and then in the banking section. This is where our bank feeds are at. And we tried to enter the data in essence, mostly with the bank feeds. Remember that if you're reliant on the bank feeds to actually enter all your data into the system, meaning you're not entering it first, but you're waiting till it clears the bank to enter it, then all of your data will in essence match the banks if everything has been input properly, making the bank reconciliation a lot easier, especially after the first month or initial month, because you won't have that beginning balance problem. So the second months going forward would be a lot easier. Any, if you're not, if you're deviating from just reliant on the bank, for example, if you have a accrual system that is in place, then remember that you're gonna possibly have outstanding checks and deposits, and that's natural, that is gonna happen. That's the reconciling items and doing that system gives you a little bit more control, uh, internal control, matching your books to the bank's books instead of just relying on one set of books, which is in essence the bank's books. But it takes a little bit more work for the reconciliation. Okay, so then if we go to the reconciling item down here, it's gonna be in <clears throat> the bookkeeping as well, if we're looking at this view, and then we're gonna go to reconcile down below. If I go to the other view, the accountant view, it would be under the accounting tab under the accounting tab and then reconcile on the left hand side okay so then we're in the reconcile i'm going to close up the hamburger now remember the last times we did a reconcile and you could look at it in the history so if i go into the history over here i can find that report you can also basically i believe find it in the reports area but this report's a little bit different than the other reports 
uh, because it's not being constructed as you enter the data. It's more of a reconciling, a double check type of thing, an internal control type of thing. If I view the report, this is our report from the last bank reconciliation that we had done, basically tying out uh, to, you know, adjusting the bank statement uh, to our books as of January. So this was the statement ending balance that we saw here. If I went to the mock bank statement, 20,000, <clears throat> and we reconciled that to, to the register balance, which is on the books, 143760. If I go back to my balance sheet, 143760 for September. Now we're gonna do October. Let's keep that tab open. That's a good tab to have. Let's make another tab. I'm gonna right click on it and duplicate it again. Pull this one to the left so that we're gonna work on the left and then we got our three reports on the right. Now let's go back into our bank rec. I could, I could do it a couple different ways. I could go back to the register this way and I can, well, let's go do it this way. <laughs> let's do it this way. Let's go to the bookkeeping down below and then go to the reconcile again and close up the hand boogie. And we're gonna go into the uh, char the checking account. So we're doing the checking account this time. It's for 9.30, uh, last statement was 9.30. So we're going to the following statement after that. This was the beginning balance now. So if we look at our mock bank statements, which hopefully I can jump back and forth a little bit better this time. We ended off last time at the 20,055480. If I go to the next statement, that's gonna be the beginning balance for the next month. So here's our activity, here's the additions, here's the subtractions, here's the ending balance, 4136678. 4136678. Uh, ending balance, four, four, that's not a four, 41366.78, was that it? Was that right? 41. 4136678. It's it's easier, by the way, with two screens. 4136678. But I can do it with one screen because I'm super competent and practiced in this stuff. But I would recommend two screens. I'm gonna bring it on back to 11 no, 1130. We're on 1031. 1031. 1031. Roger that. Let's go ahead and start the reconciliation process start it out okay so we got our statement balance that's and that's what we put in on our statement we're going to have that matching the cleared balance which is not all the activity in the system but rather it's everything that we check off the things that we don't check off are going to be the reconciling items now if you're completely dependent on the bank uh, and you're creating your system just purely from bank feeds then all of this stuff might be checked off already because it's trying to help you out by reconciling as you enter the data using the bank feeds because that's basically that transaction has already been matched to the bank. So you can you can see that it checked all these ones off all auto, automatically already. And so if that was all the transactions, we could just basically <clears throat> we could just basically reconcile this would be at zero. But you can see there's a problem. Now if there's a problem and this isn't at zero, then the fact that it checks it off for you already could be helpful. We could go back in there and try to find what the difference is. But a lot of times when something doesn't match up, the reality is the easiest thing to do is just uncheck everything and then do it again. And we'll just do it again just for practice purposes so you can see how the bank rec works. So I'm just gonna say, okay, thanks for trying to help me. Are you sure you want to select? I'm gonna say, yeah, I'm gonna uncheck the whole thing. <clears throat> and so I'm gonna do it again, just like a normal bank reconciliation. Now the goal of course here is the bank balance for October is 34,249.49, which differs from our statement balance of the 41,366.78. So what we're gonna do is find what that difference is by ticking and tying off everything on the bank statement to our books. If it's on the bank statement and not on our books, we're gonna add it to our books unless the bank is wrong, which isn't normally the case. If it's on our books and not on the bank statement, then it might be an outstanding item, which is gonna be the reconciling item, outstanding items like checks and deposits. So we're gonna be going from the bank statement to our books and just tick and tie everything off. The first thing we can tick and tie off is the beginning balance, which matches out this time. I don't have that beginning balance problem because that 20,055480 is what's over here. Let's see if my mouse, my mouse gets lost sometimes. It's not my fault, the mouse, is, the mouse gets hungry. 20,055480 and then it just starts wandering around. So if the mouse starts wandering around randomly, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. I'm gonna go into the deposits here. 
and then we're just going to tick and tie these things out now so i'm going to do the ticking and the tying so we're going to say 1907 i'll try to do two at a time 1907 and 1050 so let's do that mouse so there's <clears throat> 1907 and 1050 if i get the dates a little off it's a practice problem bear with me uh and uh and so we've got those two i'm going to go back on i'm going to go back on over and say okay let's yellowfy those to say that we found those this would be the, like just the, the process of reconciling and we'd say 151907 so we're going to say all right 15000 wait a second i already, I already got the 1907 k paso 19 there's two 1907s there's <clears throat> oh there it is okay okay i hear i see it i see what's happening around here i thought there was a problem but no it was just me being stupid or paranoid or both let's go ahead and go ahead and yellowfy those two 38250 and another 1907 what is going on with the 1907s you might ask i might ask another 1907 38250 382 50 1907 oh that's a monthly charge probably is what we're thinking okay cool now let's go back on over 8250 1907 09 1907 1907 back in 1907 there was something what was the other one you remember what the other one was was uh the other one was nine oh nine nine cents that's a funny number too nine cents just nine cents there it is then i'm going to go back on over where are you going mouse where are you going you got to find your way to the proper location here i got to put some little food on this page so the mouse always comes back to it one two five zero eighty one two five zero eighty is right there and then we're going to go back on over and say okay wait that's the wrong spot here we go and we're going to yell at one ninety three twelve one nine three twelve one nine three twelve and then let's go ahead and mark that off as done five thousand sixty four twenty four i can do two at a time i can do two at a time my brain holds up to seven items at a time that's what i'm told that's why the phone number has seven numbers in it my brain can hold seven numbers for like two seconds 1907 38 14 1907 and 38 14 is down here that one tried to trick me but i was i wasn't tricked this time this time you win this round three seven thirty five and twenty cents so 7.35 and 20 cents. And then I'm gonna say, let's mark those off and then 7 and 35.62. So 7 and 35.62, there's the 35.62. But I think I got the seven and the seven. This was seven and 7.35. So I think those two should be checked off, but I might've done them wrong it tricked me the thing tricked me that time but i think they both should be checked off because now i'm confused what about that 20 cents what about the 20 cents i already got the 20 cents right there it should be checked off right okay so that should come out to 23 1 24 41 i could check my number there 23 23 1 24 41 Roger that, 10-4, 23 23-124-41, doesn't work if you say it wrong, 23 okay, so now let's go to the other side of things, and we'll go to the checks, and down, things go, making it go down, payment stuff, payment side of things. Same thing, we'll do some ticking and some tying, some tying and some ticking. We're going to go 194499, starting it out one at a time. I don't want to overextend myself. Dates might be a little bit different because it's the example problem. Bear with me, this is just kind of the, 
Example, we're just ticking and tying from the bank rec to our books in the reconciliation process. Where are you going, mouse? Go to the right spot. That's where the food is. The food's right there. 6233, 124. So 6233, 62, 124, 61. Okay, doke. And then we're gonna go back on over and check those off. Check those off. 75 and 50 and 25, 50. I'm gonna do three at a time. This has never been done before. 25, 50, 75, and 30, was it? I think that was it. I'm gonna check it off, but I can't really remember. No, no, 30's down here, but it was 20. See, now you, you did three at a time. You couldn't handle it. That's way too much. 75 and 25, 50. Seven things in the brain at a time. 25, 75. So 25 and 75. 25 and 75. Where's my highlighter? And then 50 and 30. 50 and 30. So there's the 30. Where's the 50? The 50 is not, oh, there it is. There's a 50. I guess we picked that one up. Okay, so that should give us, again, the dates might be a little off, practice problem, bear with me. That's the general idea here. So we're gonna say that that's gonna be the outflows of the 2003-12-43. Does that match? 2003-12-43, you're darn right it does. You're darn right. 48 is the ending balance then, which should tie out to my cleared balance, 41,366.78, and that's what the statement balance is, so I'm in balance. Note that that is not what the balance is on my balance sheet as of October uh, 31st, which is 34,249.49, because we have these outstanding items in the practice problem here, and these are probably items that we entered in just as practice. So on these two items in, in real life, we'd say, hey, look, that didn't clear it since last month and this month. It's been two months and it hasn't cleared. So we'd probably want to be checking in the following month. Did it clear in the following month? If it did, then maybe it's just an outstanding item. Possibly that's more likely to happen if we wrote an actual physical check instead of an electronic transfer, which would take longer to, to clear. Uh, so we, we would want to check those, but if those are legitimate items that we have actually written, then we can see that we have actually reconciled. We know exactly what the difference is, which is not there just to figure out the ending balance ca of cash. It's not there just for us to check these outstanding items and make sure that they are uh, okay by seeing if they cleared in the following time frame, although we will do that. It's also so that we can check all the stuff that did clear off uh, now that we we checked it off here, not only because we want to know that the cash is correct, but because all of those transactions have another side to them, in, in part creating the entire income statement. And so the fact that we have all the activity helps us to, to create the income statement, helps, helps us to build a history of what has happened, would be the idea. So that means that you don't want to hit the reconcile finish button here until this gets to zero. It, it should be exactly zero. You might say, hey, it's only like $5 off. It's only a thousand dollars off. That's immaterial in my business because I'm I make money or whatever, right? But that it would be immaterial maybe with cash, but that one dollar off could be like twenty deposits and, and forty checks that actually netted out to be off to a dollar, which doesn't make a material difference in cash. But if you if you don't have twenty deposits and forty checks in the system in terms of the activity, your income statement's gonna be off because the other side of the transactions are gonna be off. That's what we're kind of looking for. So any variant from zero, the the amount of, of checking or verification or internal control goes down a lot. And you should be able to get it basically at zero because again, if it's on the bank statement, then it should be in your books. And if it's not, you should change your books most likely to tie into the bank statement unless the bank statement you know, is wrong. So it's a little tedious to do, but uh, if, if you had all of your books created from the bank statements, it'll be really easy because you could just, it'll be at zero uh, automatically, most likely. And if it's not that way, if you have a more so full service accounting system, a little tedious to check them all off, but well worth the time typically because it's a huge internal control. This combined with the double entry accounting system are a pretty good 
you know, internal controls even for a, a small business to have some confidence and assurance that at least everything has been put into the system uh, in some way. So let's go ahead and finish it up. Finish it. Your reconciliation is complete. I'm going to say done. And then we could go into the history here. And we've got our two reconciliations now. So let's go to the second one that we just created. Let's see what has been created. Now notice that when we did that process, that's the process of reconciling. This is the reconciliation, the actual end product. So now we're going to go back through that and say, okay, the statement balance, 20,554. Tying out to the beginning balance here, 20,554. This is not really what I consider the bank reconciliation, but it's on the report, just kind of recapping. 2000, uh, one, 2003, 43. 2003 1243 here and then we have the activity of the 23 124 41 and there's the 23 124 41 ending balance the 41 366 78 and so if i go back on over there's the 41 366 78 of that being the cleared balance on the bank statement not the book balance because the book balance according to our balance sheet is 34 249 49 and if i go back over here that's this number 3 34 249 49 the difference the reconciling item meaning the bank reconciliation is actually right here between these three numbers is that 7,117.29. however these unclear transactions in one lump sum number is not sufficient. I want to know what those transactions actually are so I can verify them. So we can go into the activity. This first activity not giving us much more new detail because it's basically on the bank statement. Same with the deposits here, but the unclear transactions, that's what we're looking for. That's what we want to see. It's because this is this is what the actual difference is. So so there's that 711729 and it's comprised of these two items. So now I could go back in and see if those two items are clearing in the following month and if they're legitimate items and that's useful. But once again, that's not the only reason we do the bank reconciliation. We're also being able to say, hey, that's exactly what the difference is between what the bank says and what my books say, giving me verification over all the other transactions that are in the system making me more confident about my actual balance not just because it ties out to what's in the bank or because i know what the difference is between that but but also because again it, it confirms the other side of all the transactions all the transactions that have been entered the detail and the detail is necessary to create say an income statement which is a timing statement so that's why the the bank reconciliation very very important you might want to save these because if someone went back in, you can imagine if they went back in and deleted, say, a deposit or something that had cleared. If your bank reconciliation adjusted to, to take into consideration that deleted deposit or check that you already reconciled, your reconciliation would no longer be reconciled. So I think these reconciliations will be static in the system, which is what they need to really be, uh, even if someone deletes the prior data. And you want to keep that in mind because if something happens, if delete, if data in the past gets deleted, you want to have the bank reconciliation in place because that can help you to kind of figure out, piece back together uh, what it should be.